at the wrong time. You say nothing with Terry B? Oh, no. Nah. Nothing. <laughs> I didn't think she had an album. I think it was just a single. They say it's an album, but I never knew it was an album. Okay. Any memories of uh, All in the Same Game? Um, not really. Just the video shoot, you know. That's all. And then doing um, Arsenio Hall. The, the other than that, I mean, it was cool. You know, it went gold and stuff. So it was just showing the West Coast that the East Coast can do it too. That's all it is. You know, we copied from the from the East Coast. Self destruction. So. Yeah. So right. it was kind of. It was cool. It was all right. Right. Uh, we recently lost uh, CPO Boss Hogg. Uh, any memories, uh, interaction, uh, working on the album, anything you could tell us about that time? Oh, yeah. He had a great voice. I mean, especially on the, uh, the last album. We used him on a couple, one of the songs, and it just, he had a great voice. I mean, I remember, like, CPO, wow. Big Vince, boy, that, that, that's my boy. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what, what happened to him, how he died or anything, but wow, man, people are falling off. Really? 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 Oh, wow. Uh, penthouse players. I had nothing to do with that. That was quick. Okay. I think, and that was after, oh, if I'm not mistaken, was after Dre, wasn't it? Or was it? No, it was not. Or was this it? is like 92, I believe. This is 90. Yeah. That's Dre Chronic as well. I think Dre came out more December. So Yeah, so that's after play. Dre left. Okay. That they came out, yeah. Yeah, that was definitely after Dre left. Yeah, I, I had nothing to do with that one. I don't know who produced them. Maybe Quick did some songs or something. or I don't know. Okay. Easy didn't have any involvement as well, or is it more quick? Well, it was his group. He, I mean, well, he ain't a producer or nothing. He ain't a writer or none of that. So it's just right. his group. So did they have an album? Or was yeah, it they did. Yeah. Penthouse players. Yeah. Yeah. Click. Yep. Yeah. It just, they came in and came right out. I mean, I don't know if they even, they might have made a video, maybe. I don't remember. Uh, HWA. Uh, I did some um, tracks when they came to Ruthless because they had, I think they had already did songs before Ruthless. Then they came to Ruthless and I worked on a few tracks. I worked on a, I don't know if it was an EP or something. I fixed up some tracks they had and I might have did some new tracks. I can't remember, but yeah, I did some stuff on that, on that, on their stuff. I think it was just an EP. I don't know if it was a full album. Okay. Uh, any memories of the At Band Clan, who later became the Black Eyed Peas? Yeah, you know, Will One X. I mean, I remember I was in the studio. I don't know what I was working on. I'm coming out the bathroom, and he coming. And it was definitely him. And I think I seen him recently, a year or two ago. I'm like, I know you. You know, I'm like, I know you. <laughs> Will One X, yeah. <laughs> they was a kind of ahead, way ahead of themselves. You see, they had to catch up years later, then they finally did the thing. But they was, I think they was just too far ahead of themselves back right. then. Uh, one of the last groups to join Ruthless was Bone. Did you have any hand or any uh, insight with that group as they came to uh, Ruthless? I remember me and E was in Cleveland doing a show. And maybe before the show, I remember being backstage and these five guys came around. He had just walked out the dressing room. So I'm left there by myself, and they these guys start rapping. Well, kind of singing and rapping. I'm like, you know, I'm thinking, what is this? What is this? So he came back. I said, hey, y'all go talk to him over there. I remember that. <laughs> and by the time we got home from that little leg of tour or whatever we were doing, they was in L.A. I was like, Wow. They came all the way from Cleveland on the bus on one big bag of Lay's potato chips. You know, that <laughs> might have been a two, almost three-day bus ride. Right. One bag of baked potato chips. That's it. Between them. <laughs> but no doubt. Once, they, once they heard For the Love of Money, they I guess they fell in love with that track. And they just, they was like us. 
They didn't sound like us, but they was like us coming out totally different from everybody. Right. And they came out totally different. And they just kicked the door in and just boom, took off. Now I'm going to uh, mention some projects that I know you were involved with. Just give me briefly your best memory. Uh, Easy does it. Oh, yeah, yeah. We worked on all that. I think I played the drum. Yeah, I played the drums on that one, too. Too hard. I money. played drums on every album. If I'm not mistaken, except EP. Yeah, I did. I played the drum. That was a fun album to me. But if you look at the album cover, it looks like an NWA cover. Because everybody, it wasn't just him solo. Because I think it was Dre, you know, that came up with, instead of just NWA, make two separate groups, two separate albums, two separate money. So that was a heck of an idea. You know, it's the same group, but just look like two. Right. Uh, straight out of Compton. That was, it took, it, it took us only 30 days to make that album. And I noticed why it took 30 days. I noticed now a lot of the songs was already done before. We had done them on EPs already on maxi singles. I mean, a whole bunch of Rufus Villain, you know, all, a lot of that stuff was not new. Except Stray Out of Compton, the police song. A couple of more was new, but a lot of them were like Compton and House. That was an old one. We just did a remix. I think we did the, um, I think I remixed the um, Cube song, Dope Man. I did that. You know, I mixed it by cutting tape. Not mm. in the computer. It wasn't computer, it wasn't back then. I had right. to cut the tape for all that, the way it was cut up. That was all done by edits. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Dre knew how to cut tape and everything. We knew all that stuff. We learned. That's why we got our sound. We we learned our sound. And we we did stuff that, you know, people wasn't doing back then. Laying right. two or three kick drums, you know, to get that big fat sound. We would EQ the sound when we record it. So by the time we mix it, when it's finished, we EQ it again. So we was getting a big fat sound for that time. I mean, it was, it was just incredible. We just, we learned everything on the fly. We learned everything. We couldn't go to the University of YouTube and stuff and figure it out. <laughs> we had to actually, well, I read the manuals of the machines and, and all that stuff and wow. That, right. Wow. I'm just thinking about it. We did some work back then. Absolutely. Uh, 100 miles and running. Yeah, that was that was a challenge kind of because Q left. So now people are wondering, what are we going to do? Who's going to take his spot? And Dre, think about it, Dre didn't rap but once or twice on the Stray Outta Compton. He wasn't the rapper. But once he did that, he had to step into that you know, Q was one third of the voice. So that was gone. So Dre just filled right in. Right. We didn't have a bunch of, you know, nowadays they got 18 different artists on one song. We didn't do all that. He just filled it and that was it. Uh, any uh, truth to the rumor that uh, Herbie Hancock didn't like the sample for Just Don't Bite It? I was there when the phone call came. Dre answered the phone. He talked to him. Because the original track was a different sample we used. And it was, he just, he didn't like it <laughs> because of, of the topic, you know. <laughs> he actually called us in the studio and told us, you know, whatever, what the answer was. He didn't like, you know, it wasn't that he didn't like it. It was, it was about what was talked about in the song. So, so we had to take the sample out and had to do music. So, but to me, it came out better than the original one with the original sample. I think Speed or somebody got a, t a tape of it or uh, the song. Yeah, he sure did call us. <laughs> <laughs> the great Herbie Hancock. <laughs> uh, in for life. That was, that was, um, a growing up, we matured. The sound got, people don't understand it. The sound on that album is 100 times better than Stray Outta Compton. 
Straight Outta Compton was just the album because it was the original. But the, the second album, well, the, the last album was way better sound. We used way less samples too because from the original Straight Outta Compton, we got sued quite a bit because we was the poster child of getting sued for samples. All the stuff in the breaks and all, we got sued for all that stuff. So the last album, you know, there was only one sample, and that was for the days of way back. Mm. That was the only sample on the, on the whole album. We didn't do that no more because <laughs> we knew. But that was a better album, a more grown, you know, Stray Outta Compton was young, and this was more grown up. And this was the beginning of the G-Funk. But it originally started with Above the Law. So it started with Above the Law, then it bled into that one. And then when Dre left, that's where it came. That's exactly when it started. Right. Uh, your solo album. Um, I did that one. I didn't want to do it because I'm not an artist. I don't, I don't rap. Never wanted to rap. Never thought about it. Nah. It just, some, they came to me like a year later after he died and they wanted the album. I said, well, I don't rap, but okay, you know. And I use a lot of the the newer Rufus people, the BG Knockout, the Dracesters, and all that, the Menage a Trois album, which I did. I used that. I mean, I used a bunch of the new people. And I had, you know, I think I had some E vocals maybe. If I'm not mistaken, I might, I might, no, I didn't use them on album. I was thinking, because at the time of my album, I did three albums at one time. I was doing, working on my album. Priority came for me to do the greatest hits. You know, the original greatest hit with the picture of all five of us, the black and white one. And then at the same time, the courts came to me to do Easy's Labs album, because I had the album in the studio. It was just there. I mean, Think about that album. Once he died, eh, whatever, you know, I left them track. I didn't think nothing about it. But a lot of people wanted them tracks. Somebody tried to get them from him. You know, our used to be manager wanted. He didn't come out and say it, but I knew what he was hitting to. Right. I'm like, is he trying to get the album from me? I had even thought of the album. It was just sitting in the studio. That's all it was. Anybody could have just came and got the album. Right. But they came to me, so I did three albums at once. And I, I did the album not to make hits. I was just doing it to dedicate, you know, to him. Because nobody else dedicated no album or nothing until years later. I think Dre did somewhat of a... I don't know if he did a whole song. Right. But I just... Dedicated the album to it. Very dope. Uh, take us back to some uh, TV moments. Uh, rolling through Compton on the flatbed on uh, Yo! MTV Raps. Wow. That was, I don't know who I did what that was, but that was unique. It was just very different. You know, on the back of a flatbed rolling through Compton, just, that was, that was probably one of their best shows. Maybe I'm quite sure. Just rolling through all through Compton that whole day, that was pretty fun. I mean, you know, even though you ride and you, if they make a wrong turn, we're gonna be all tossed up. <laughs> but that was fun, though. That that was cool. Arsenio Hall show. Which one? The uh, one with the same the, the running. Or then I I did one with E when he did it's on the diss song, which right. he knew I didn't want to be a part of. That's why I wasn't let's, in the video. Let's talk Man. about the 100 Miles and Running. Uh, oh, I yep. forgot we did that one, too. So we did Arsenio three times. I thought it was two, but it was three times. That was cool. I mean, you know, we tried to do it. We tried to come out different. I think it was me that looked through the door first, and, you know, like we just broke in and got past security. Instead of just coming out like a regular group. <laughs> you know, they tried to – they wanted to make us look scary, you know, <laughs> running through the audience and stuff, but – that was cool. That was fun. I forgot we did Arsenio three times. I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can you take us back? There's a clip going viral of Easy running past you with an Uzi. What was going on that day? Which clip was that? Looked like you and Dre, I believe, was oh, doing we was an on interview. the back. Oh, we were doing an interview. 
I didn't. I, I never saw it. He ran behind it. <laughs> yeah. I did not know that. I seen a, a freeze frame of it, but I didn't pay it attention. I remember the day because it was the hundred miles and running video shoot, and we was on the sitting on the back of the end of a truck, and we were doing the interview. I didn't know he ran by us with the car. <laughs> <laughs> wow! See, I learn something every day. Yeah. Uh, you tour with Who's Who uh, of the 80s. Uh, can you take us back to your best tour lineup and maybe a favorite tour memory? Uh, well, back then, every night, that was a memory. <laughs> so I'm not going to talk about that. But <laughs> we, we did shows with, I mean, Salt and Pepper, Eric B and Rakim. I mean, anybody, Slick Rick. I mean, we did just so many shows. And in a lot of shows, it was in the early days of the NWA and the Wrecking Crew days. One of my not fondest moments, but was in the Wrecking Crew, and we did a show, two shows with Morris Day. And that was like, oh, I remember in, in Texas, El Paso. I'm like, wow, Morris Day, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, he was, he was the headliner. Yeah, we did two shows with him. But that was Wrecking Crew day. Like, wow. Right. Uh, what did it mean for uh, one of the biggest rock bands in history to wear an N.W.A. hat on stage? I'm talking about Axl Rose uh, oh, being yeah. at the peak uh, of, you know, being the biggest group. What did that mean for N.W.A. at the time? It was, it was a couple of things where we didn't take advantage of it. And I'll tell you about that in a second. That was great. He wore he he loved us. <laughs> you know, he loved it. Man, he he matter of fact, he liked us so much. You know, wearing the the, the hat in the videos and and on in the tour, he wanted us on tour with them. We were supposed to do shows with Guns N' Roses. I mean, Guns N' Roses was the big biggest band back then. They didn't do arenas; they did stadiums. So they wanted us to do a couple of shows in Florida, you know, I guess to test the water to see how it was. So they was giving us 25000 for 10 minutes. This is in 1991. 25 grand for 10 minutes. So we bought them, what, played two, three songs? Three songs. But our manager wanted 50000 Man, if we had to do that, oh, my God. We didn't know it too. They didn't negotiate no more. It was over. Mm. After that, Guns N' Roses did a world tour. When they came to LA and was at the Forum, they was there seven days, seven nights in a row. We'd have did all them shows. And I know me and Dre used to like being on the road, performing. That's what we did from the Wrecking Crew days. And if if we would have got on that tour for Guns N' Roses, well, actually, they were setting up a tour for us for the second album. But no buildings or nothing wouldn't let us get in a building. They wouldn't give us insurance for it. So that kind of was the nail on the coffin for NWA. It was, it was over after that. Was, would you think that was the turning point with the group? Um, no, nah, it may have been couple of other things, but it wasn't... See, this is what people don't understand. It wasn't the group that was mad at each other. There was no arguments, no fights, none of that, even when Cube left. The circle is the group. No problems in there, but it's the outer circle that the problems was. With people looking in, telling people whatever they're telling them, and that's what broke up the group. They could think about this. The group was number one when they broke up. Number one on the billboard. We had just shipped, in them days, 500,000 out the door. That was unheard of for hip hop. Unheard of. Run DMC, none of them did that. We did it out the door. And we was broke up. You know, just... But I think the group had to come to an end. It had to come to an end. Think about this. You can't think of NWA as making two or three albums that was whack. You can't think that. They only did two albums. And they was both number one albums. So we broke up at the right time, at the top. 
Most groups right. break up at the bottom, trying right. to make a hit, trying to get a deal or something. We broke up at the peak, but the peak came again 30 years later. The movie, Hall of Fame, all this stuff. Now Dre doing the Super Bowl. So it's, it, 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 we're still talking about this 30 years later. <laughs> it, right. I, I'll tell you this, and I've been thinking about this a lot. What other group, not hip hop, rock and roll, heavy man doesn't matter. What other group gets, was hot 30 years ago and then 30 years later, you're hot again? You're just right. as hot as it was back then. I can't think of a group. Not Prince, not Michael Jackson. None of them. There was no more thrillers after that. None of that. It, it's just amazing. That group was just blessed. I mean, it was blessed, and we didn't even know it. Right. Think about it. It had to break up for Cube to go where he went, for Dre to get where he is. It it had to do that. Right. I mean, it just, that's what happened. <laughs> but we still talking about it. Yeah, 30 years later. Let's take it to the movie Straight Outta Compton. Uh, what were your initial thoughts after uh, watching the movie? Uh, were you pleased with it overall? Oh no, it was cool. I was I was just amazed that somebody making a movie about us. Just us, five the five kids from from Compton around you know, just wow. Because when we started music, we never thought of oh, we're gonna have a movie, Hall of Fame, gold, platinum, triple platinum. Oh, that was never a thought. It was just to make a little money. Just a little bit. <laughs> not to be rich or not to have what you want. Nah, that was never. It was the love. And then when they came with the movie, this I like the movie. Even though the movie's probably 65 to 70% right, you know, a lot of the stuff didn't line up right. You had to, like the Detroit scene, you had to make it look more than what it was. Mm. We didn't get arrested at the Detroit scene. They ran us off the stage, but I ran all the way back to the hotel. <laughs> you know, so they had to Hollywood it, you know, to make it look Hollywood, but I like right. the movie. I'm really, I, I, I was surprised because it, it's so different to see ourselves on stage. I didn't know we was that big, I guess. I didn't never really know that, but I guess we must have been. Right. <laughs> Looking back, do you wish, uh, you know, seeing how the Wu-Tang is doing the series, do you kind of wish that you would have went the series route, or do you think the movie captured uh, what NWA was about overall? Um, I think the movie was better for us because it just hit, and that's it. It, it, it. it went number one for biopic at the time. Number one musical, you know, us? Five guys from Compton? <laughs> so it hit more for us. I mean, it just it killed all the other rap movies, any of the other rap movies. It just blew them out. I mean, just I mean it was just one of a kind, one just once. Just once. That's it. Right. Uh can you take us back to uh the initial discussion when you realized that you were gonna be uh inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Um, well, it wasn't no discussion. <laughs> we remember we uh, was a nominated four times in a row, three or four times year after year, and we never made it. And then when we got nominated that last time, I was like, because eh. I think LL or somebody was a nominated at the same time, like, because I remember for American Music Award, us and LL was a nominated, and he got it. We didn't get it. So when it came to us for the Hall of Fame, it was LL again against us. And I said, ah, uh, he going to get it. And then, bam, we got it. I'm like, what? I'm like, wow, really? I mean, because even being go way back to the garage, DJing, Hall of Fame, that was not even a thought. Even when we was in the heyday of the group, which people don't realize there's only four-year span for Rufus. 
That's all it was. Four years, 91, and ended. Even though me and E still did some ruthless stuff after that. But I'm talking about the prime years. And it just, in Hall of Fame, I was just like, wow. That's like, in, you know, in sports, that's the highest peak you can get. There's right. nothing higher than that. Yeah, you can always right. make more money or do Super Bowls or do this or whatever. But that's the highest peak you can get in music. Was that the uh, first time you guys had been around each other since uh, Cube left the group all at uh, the same time? Oh, yeah. That was because that was the first time we was on stage together since Cube left. And then a week later, we did Coachella. That was the first time we performed together since 1989. So it was, I thought for a second, you know, everybody's happy about performing, like, okay, let's take this around the world. But it just didn't happen. It just did not happen. But it, for that brief minute, just like when I took that picture at the Hall of Fame, that selfie, for that, if you look at the picture, for that one second, one frame, all the smiles in there was genuine. 